Hello, my name is Elizabeth New, and I did my research on gender nudity in art. I focused on the idea that women being inferior to men was not a common gender notion in the medieval era, and people naturally assume that when they hear the term medieval or dark ages, that it was a time with no laws, no rules, no sense of civilization, or anything greater that was tying people together. And it's, I guess in like modern times, it'd be more concerned as like that time period was anarchy. Everybody was just doing what they wanted when they wanted and nothing was stopping them. Well, that could not be farther from the truth. Rather, the at the time, the Roman Empire was alive, very much alive, and Constantine had revived Christianity after a very long reign of Christian suffering, which was on, which was done under a past ruler. And so, like, all of this was happening at the time. It was not just a time of, noth of like, just nothing. It was a time of flourishing and movements, and art was a very big deal, too. Um, to go along with the wrong assumptions of the time, there was... People naturally just assume that, oh, if there's anarchy, there's obviously misogynist, there's misogynism. And like, that's not always, that's not true either. And so going back to Adam and Eve, who are humanity's parents in the Christian religion, both figures, regardless of their gender, are placed under the same discrimination and shame of being nude. And I focused on the nudity of these figures and other figures in art to better help my research in to medieval gender notions because when a person is completely nude, there's nothing for them to hide. The protection of clothes just aren't present to hide the scars from the past, imperfections that cannot be fixed, etc. And oftentimes, um, you can get more of like an emotional like sense of like how these people of how the different figures were perceived because you see it even in modern times, like a person can be completely depressed on the inside, but on the outside, they'll show that they are wearing outgoing and like colorful, like a physical appearance, you know, with the clothes and stuff. And it's like, no one knows what's happening on the inside. But when that's all gone and stripped completely bare, a person's completely open and like seen to people, to the outside world, to everything. And so I thought that by researching nude figures it would have given me a somewhat more accurate comparison unto like what gender notions were back then because you can't just focus on like one gender you have to focus on both genders to understand how it fully wrapped around and i say somewhat accurately compared because while clothes do hide parts of the truth nudity itself brings along a string of contradictions like, nudity can be both purity, but also sexuality. It can be perfect. It can be imperfect. It goes on and on and on. And this goes along with women's perceived place in this period of time that also has many contradictions. Because artists put Adam, Eve and Adam as equals, but, like, in the beginning of the time when, like, they they have artists perceiving them in front of um, this the... the tree and uh, eve's getting the apple and like they're in front of the devil the snakes and then there's also another one where they're in front of god himself but in both of those depictions even adam are equals they're both equally vulnerable they're both equally sh ashamed of their nudity not neither gender is being put up another up above one another and neither gender is being placed below the other and another well, um, and then rather on the other hand, um, other artists in like more architecture sculptures, which were actually placed in churches, inferred that women were inferior to men. The use of there's an example that there's um there's an example of a sculpture in a church with the use of direct eye contact of God being above the people who were seeing this, so like the audience, so like the people who would have been in the church, and is watching these people create commit sin while below him so it's like he's like on the second tier and right below him on the first tier with which is eye level with um the audience is a bunch of women willingly committing a sexual act with serpents and toads which were considered the devil's animals and men were not seen anywhere in this they were not seen to be tempted they were not seen as new sculptures but the women were 
And it's almost as if the women were being punished for their past sins of like Eve and stuff in the church. But when you look at other mediums like manuscripts, women were not nearly under such criticism. And this goes along with like men, like men were not nearly under as much criticism either. And highlighting that while maybe socially there was a bit of an idea that women were inferior to men, because socially and like what's on paper is very different, um, the deeper religious aspect showed that God saw the two genders as equal. And when compared to modern times, this is not always the case. For example, daring ch um, religious scientists say that in childbirth, is there's a reason for women being in fear during that time because they have to birth the baby through pain and suffering. And that was only brought because of the first female sin. And that hints, and that directly hints that women are inferior because of what they've done in the past and that affects them now. Well, in the medieval art, the depictions are entire, have an entirely different idea that with all the and with all the contradictions with gender equality, neither gender has an extreme bias for it or against it, meaning that the medieval era was not nearly as misogynistic as it's been perceived. So, once again, another assumption that has proved to be wrong with just a little bit of research. Thanks for listening to my presentation and have a good day.